Are you tired of feeling like something is off in your living room? Well, in this video, I'll show you the most common design mistakes and how to easily fix them for a stylish and functional space. So stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome back to this channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Elizabeth, an interior designer. And I talk about interior design on this channel. Mistake number one is overcrowding your living room. More furniture or oversized pieces can make the living room feel cramped and uncomfortable. Imagine walking into your living room and feel like you are navigating through an obstacle. That's what happens if you overcrowd your space. Too much furniture or big pieces can make your living room feel suffocating. You cannot relax and enjoy the space if you can't move freely or if every inch is cramped. Your living room should be inviting, not cramped. To fix the mistake, do this. Number one, evaluate the space. Take stock of your living room's size and layout before adding furniture. Consider how much space you need for movement and comfort. Number two, choose wisely. Opt for furniture pieces that fit the scale of your room. Select smaller or multipurpose furniture for smaller spaces and avoid cramping too many pieces into one area. Number three, create an open area. Leave space between furniture to create a sense of openness and flow. Avoid blocking pathways and doorways with bulky items. Instead of having multiple bulky sofas, consider a smaller sofa paired with a couple of armchairs or ottomans. Use furniture with exposed legs to create a sense of lightness and openness in your living room. And lastly, if space is limited, Choose furniture with inbuilt storage to reduce clutter and maximize functionality. If you want your living room to be cozy, stop filling every corner with furniture. Mistake number two is neglecting the rug size. Neglecting the size of your rug means choosing a rug that is too small or too large for your living room space. And this makes the room feel disjointed and incomplete, actually failing to define the sitting area properly. Picture this. A tiny rug floating in the middle of your living room floor like a postage stamp. It just doesn't tie the room together. Some people don't know the difference between a rug and a carpet. Even you at some point you've talked of a carpet when you actually meant a rug. Am I lying? Tell me on the comment section. Carpets and rugs are both floor coverings but they differ in size and usage. Carpets typically cover the entire room and are installed wall to wall offering insulation and soundproofing. On the other hand, rugs are smaller Movable pieces used to define spaces, add warmth, or protect floors. So next time, don't confuse the two. To ensure that you have the correct rug size, do this. Number one, measure your space. Before purchasing a rug, measure the dimensions of your living room to determine the appropriate size. Number two, go big. Opt for a rug large enough to accommodate all the essential furniture pieces in the sitting area, ensuring that the front legs of the sofa and the chairs sit comfortably on the rug. And number three, you have to define the space. The rug should serve as a visual anchor for the sitting area, creating a cohesive and unified look. Let me give you practical examples to help you do it right. In a spacious living room with a large sectional sofa and a coffee table, choose an oversized rug that extends beyond the edges of the furniture to define the sitting area. For a smaller living room with a sofa and a couple of accent chairs, select a rug that fits all the pieces within its boundaries, allowing for a unified and well-proportioned look.
And lastly, consider layering a smaller rug on top of a larger one to add visual interest and texture to a room while maintaining proper scale and proportion. Think of your rug as a foundation of your living room. It sets the stage for everything else. So go big and watch your space come life with warmth and style. Mistake number three is ignoring traffic flow. Ignoring traffic flow means placing furniture in pathways or obstructing natural movement within the living room. And this makes it challenging to navigate the space and it disrupts the room's functionality. To fix the mistake, do this. Number one, evaluate pathways. Identify your living room's main pathways and traffic routes such as entryways and access points to other rooms. Number two, arrange furniture strategically. Position furniture to allow easy movement and clear pathways throughout the living room. And number three, create designated zones. Define specific areas for different activities such as sitting area, conversation nook, and traffic zones to optimize flow and functionality. As you do that, Leave adequate space between furniture pieces to allow for comfortable passage and movement. Do not place your furniture directly in front of doorways or block entrances to other rooms. And lastly, arrange seating areas to encourage conversation and interactions while maintaining clear pathways and movement. Create clear pathways that guide you from one point to another without hindrance. It not only improves the flow of the room, but also enhances its overall usability. Mistake number four is poor furniture placement. Placing furniture directly against walls or too far apart can disrupt the room's flow. Have you ever walked into a room and felt like something was off? That's often because the furniture isn't arranged right. Placing everything against the walls or too far apart can ruin the room's vibe. Imagine sitting on one end of the room and your friend on the other. You practically need a binuclear to chat. And that's not cozy, right? If your space is smaller, placing the sofa up against the wall is the best. However, arranging your furniture in the middle of a large living room might help it look warm and inviting. To fix the mistake, do this. Number one, consider conversation. Arrange furniture in grouping that encourage dialogue and interaction. Avoid pushing everything onto the wall. Number two, find balance. Aim for a balance between open space and furniture to ensure that there is enough room to move around without feeling cramped. And number three, experiment. Feel free to experiment with the different furniture arrangements until you find one that feels right for your living space. Good furniture placement can make your living room feel warm and inviting, so play around with it until you strike the perfect balance. Mistake number five is inadequate lighting. Inadequate lighting means your living room needs more light source, leading to dimness and an inviting atmosphere. Depending solely on overhead light or natural light may not provide adequate illumination, especially during evenings or cloudy days. For you to have adequate lighting in your living space, do this. Number one, layer your lighting. Incorporate a variety of light sources such as overhead fixtures, table lamps, wall scones, and floor lamps to create layers of light that can be adjusted based on the time of the day and desired ambience. Number two, consider different types of lighting. Use ambient lighting for overall illumination, task lighting for specific activities like reading or working, 
and accent lighting to highlight architectural features or artwork. Number three, maximize natural light. Keep windows unblocked and use sheer curtains to allow natural light to filter into the room during the day. To spice your lighting, install a statement pendant light fixture in the center of your living room for ambient lighting and complement it with wall-mounted scones for additional brightness. Place a floor lamp next to a reading nook or accent chair to provide focused task lighting for reading or hobbies. And lastly, use lead strip lights to illuminate shelves or display cabinets, highlighting decorative items or artwork. If you found this video helpful, kindly give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Mistake number six is cluttered services. Cluttered services occur when tables, shelves, and other services in your living room are overclouded with too many decorative items, books, or knickknacks. To keep your space organized, do this. Number one, declutter regularly. Take time to periodically remove unnecessary items from your living room services to prevent buildup. Number two, Keep it minimal. Stick to a few well-chosen accessories or decorative pieces that contribute to the room's overall aesthetics. Number three, utilize storage. Invest in storage solutions such as baskets, bins, or shelves to store items out of sight when not in use. Clear off your coffee table and only display a couple of decorative items such as a vase of flowers or a stack of books. Use decorative trays to corral items like remote controls or coasters, keeping them organized and visually appealing. And lastly, install floating shelves on the wall to display books or decorative objects freeing up the space and adding visual interest onto the room. So declutter your space and let your living room breathe. You'll be amazed at how much more inviting it feels. Mistake number seven is uncomfortable seating. Choosing uncomfortable seating means selecting sofas, chairs, or other furniture not conducive for relaxation or everyday use. It can make spending time in the living room unpleasant and uncomfortable. Imagine sinking into a couch that feels like a rock or sitting on a chair that is too stiff. It's very different from the cozy vibe you want in your living room. For you to have comfortable seats in your living room, you need to do the following. Number one, you need to prioritize comfort. When selecting a seat, prioritize comfort over style. Look for furniture with blush cushions, supportive backs, and ergonomic designs. Number two, you need to test before buying. Before making a purchase, test out the seat to ensure it feels comfortable and supportive to sit in for extended periods. Number three, you must consider functionality. Think about how you'll use the seat. For example, if you enjoy lounging, opt for a sofa with deep seats and soft upholstery. Choose a reclining sofa or sectional with built-in recliners for added comfort and versatility. Select armchairs with padded armrest and lumbar support for optimal comfort during reading or watching your TV. And lastly, invest in ottomans or footstools to provide additional comfort and relaxation options for you and your guests. Mistake number eight is hanging curtains too low. 
Hanging your curtains too low in a living space can create a visual imbalance and make the room feel cramped. It obstructs the natural flow of light and distracts from the room's overall aesthetics. To fix your curtains properly, do this. Number one, elevate the curtain rod. Mount the curtain rod closer to the ceiling than just above the window frame. This draws the eyes upwards, making the wall appear taller and the room more spacious. Number two, choose floor length curtains. Ensure your curtains slightly reach the floor for an elegant touch. It elongates the visual line from the ceiling to the floor, enhancing the perspective of height. Number three, emphasize on vertical patterns. Consider selecting curtains with vertical stripes or patterns to enhance the sense of height in the room. Vertical lines create an illusion of upward movement, adding to the room's spaciousness. Number four, opt for sheer fabrics. If privacy is an issue, consider sheer drapes, which lets light in and yet provide an impression of openness. Even with the curtains pulled, the space doesn't feel locked in. And lastly, evaluate furniture placement. Evaluate furniture placement to ensure it complements the higher curtain placement. Keep furniture proportion in mind to maintain a visual balance and harmony within the living room. Mistake number nine is placing a TV too high. Placing a TV too high in a living room can lead to discomfort and strain for viewers. It creates an awkward viewing angle and distracts from the overall aesthetic appeal of the room. Additionally, it disrupts the balance of the room's design and make the TV the focal point. For you to mount your TV properly, consider these factors. Number one, eye level placement. Ideally, position the TV so that it's at eye level when seated. Eye level placement ensures comfortable viewing for everyone without straining necks and eyes. Number two, consider viewing distance. Consider the viewing distance from the sitting area to the TV. The TV should be positioned at a distance that allows viewers to see the screen comfortably without straining. Number three is mounting the TV correctly. If mounting the TV on the wall, ensure it is installed at the appropriate height and the center of the screen should be at eye level when seated. Number four, use adjustable mounts. Consider using a TV mount with adjustable features to tilt or to swivel the TV to achieve the optimal viewing angle. And lastly, create a viewing zone. Arrange furniture in a way that defines a specific viewing zone centered around the TV. It will help to establish a cohesive layout and enhance the overall viewing experience. Mistake number 10 is hanging too much artwork or hanging them incorrectly. Picture this. You step into your living room and it feels like you've walked into an art gallery. Every inch of your wall space is covered with artwork. At some point, it feels overwhelming to your eyes. Hanging too much artwork or doing it incorrectly in a living room can create visual chaos. It's like you are trying to listen to 10 different songs simultaneously. Oh my God. It's just too much to take in and enjoy. Let me give you five tips on how to do it correctly. Tip number one, edit your collection. Take a step back and evaluate your artwork collection and choose only a few pieces that truly speak to you and complement the room's style and color palette. Less can be a more significant impact. Tip number two is to create a wall gallery. If you love multiple pieces, consider creating a gallery wall. 
arrange them thoughtfully, leaving some breathing space between each piece. Spacing allows each piece to shine individually while forming a cohesive display. Tip number three is to mind the scale. Pay attention to the scale of your artwork concerning the wall and furniture. Oversized pieces can dominate the place while small pieces may need to be found. Aim for a balanced mix that fill the space without overwhelming it. Tip number four, consider placement. Think about where you hang your artwork. Eye level is usually the sweet spot for optimal viewing, but don't be afraid to play with heights and arrangements to create visual interest and flow. Tip number five is to leave a negative space. Negative space, it's like the silent pause in a beautiful piece of music. It gives your eyes a chance to rest and appreciate what's there. So leave some empty wall space to allow your artwork to breathe and shine. If you like this type of content, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you each time I post a new video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next 